Hi everybody, I want to show you the JavaScript Chinko support that came out of um, Fabric 1.1 preview release. Uh, the details of this feature and the work that was done uh, can be found in Jira under uh, the item fab-2231. So you can read more about it uh, from here. Okay, let's get started. We'll go to the Hyperledger documentation uh, so that we can get the command to, do, to download the Docker images. So make sure we select the 1.1 version of the documentation. And here's the command you want to paste. Um, I've already done that, uh, so I'm not going to execute it again. But the result is um, all the Docker images we need are on my local machine and properly tag tagged with um, the latest tag. So they will be used when we launch the network. We're actually going to use the basic network that's part of the Fabric Samples uh, repository. You can find it by going to github.com uh, and search for uh, Hyperledger Fabric Samples repository. Once you clone it, uh, you need to make some small changes uh, so that the network will be launched in the chain code development mode. So you need to open the docker compose file find uh, search for the chain code dev uh, string so this is the launch command uh, for the peer instance and normally we would just launch it with the peer node start uh, which puts it in network mode uh, for regular operations but we want uh, the other command with the uh, chain code dev equals the true switch so we can use it uh, in development mode. In addition, we don't want to bother with TLS uh, for, uh, for, uh, for this so we need to add uh, 7052 uh, to the port mapping so um, the non-TLS endpoints uh, will be available uh, on 7052. Okay, now uh, we can now start by calling start.sh. Okay, so the execution is successful. Let's make sure the uh, my channel has been created successfully. So we just use the peer command to do channel list. And indeed, this peer has the my channel. OK, so that looks good. Uh, we'll just uh, expose the Docker log so we can follow along as things are happening. OK. Um, so now let's get to our um, chain code. In the chain code folder, you really need two files at the minimum. <clears throat> Obviously, you need the uh, JavaScript code for your chain code. Uh, in addition to that, you also need package.json that describes your dependencies. So the most important part of uh, the package.json is uh, you need to make sure you have a start script that tells the um, peer how to start your chain code. So we're going to call our chain code uh, mycc.js and the launch command would just simply be node mycc.js. The other, the other important part is uh, make sure you specify the fabric shim as your dependency. Uh, and the version as of now should be 1.0.0-preview. Okay, so now let's start our uh, chain code, mycc.js. Create a new file. Um, we'll import uh, 
fabric shin. Let's save it and call it mycc.js. All right. So to write a chain code, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you need to define a class that uh, declares two methods. One is called init, the other is called invoke. So let's call it chain code as our class. And both uh, init and invoke are uh, should be async methods because they call asynchronous uh, functions. Okay, so in our init method, we'll just get the initial account balances of the two accounts and put them into the state. Okay, we got all the values. Now we just put it into the state and we'll be done. Note that the values we parse out of our uh, arcs array are always strings. But when you put call the put state, the value must be an array. So we use the buffer from uh, to transfer that into an array. Lastly, make sure you return a success or failure message. Okay, at this point, we can give our code we've got so far a try. So you need to register the chain code with the peer by, um, by calling it like this. So you need to give it um, a name and value string like that so that uh, the peer knows what is the chain code name and version that's being registered. Uh, you also need to pass in the address of the peer. So if we see this, we know the chain code is now registered with, uh, with the peer. So now, uh, even though we have our chain code registered with the peer and running separately. We still need to uh, call the install and instantiate command on the peer to activate uh, this chain code. So these are these may sound artificial, but uh, we need to do this to satisfy the uh, lifecycle requirements of the chain code for the peer. So first call uh, chain code install. Um, we need to make sure uh, the language value is node. Uh, the name is mycc version is v0. Uh, that corresponds to the registration string here. And then finally uh, give it the path. Looks like the install was fine. Now we need to instantiate it. So we'll give it um, uh, both A and B, $100 at the beginning. Looks like there is a problem with our chain code. So now let me show you how to do debugging uh, in this environment. So we're going to use Node Inspector to do the debug. And as you do with any Node uh, program to debug, you just pass in inspect like this. And now let's go to our debugger. So we'll put a very first uh, statement and see uh, what's going on. We'll call the instantiate again. 
and indeed now we can start debugging so let's go through this one step at a time so it looks like this is not a valid function uh, I just remember it should have been parameters not params so let's uh, let's change that So we'll kill it and make the change. Launch it again. And then let's uh, try to instantiate that again. Looks like this time it's fine. So for the invoke, we're going to do two simple um, uh, actions. One is transfer from one account to another. The other is query for the account balance we'll need to first get the method name so the return object of this function call has a fcn property that gives you the function name and we're going to just call that function and passing the stub itself plus the arguments which uh, is in the uh, return dot params. So now um, we're going to implement first the transfer function, take a stub and the arguments. We expect the first argument to be uh, the transfer out account. second one is the transfer in account the third one is the amount to transfer now we need to retrieve the current value of both a and b so we can do the math and finally we'll put the new values back to the state Again, make sure we have the buffer values when we put the state. OK, so let's try our um, transfer method. Again, kill it and launch it again. And let's do some money transfer. So transfer from A to B for $10. Looks like we forgot to return either a success or a failure. So this. Okay, so it looks like the transfer was successful. We can do it a couple more times. And uh, from the log of the peer, it looks like uh, new blocks are being uh, committed. So that all looks fine. Now let's go ahead and add the query method. Core method is very simple. We'll get the name of the account to be queried and then get its balance and just return that. So let's launch that again and will now call a query so we'll query for a first that current balance is 80 because we already transferred that uh, twice so let's transfer maybe one more time and now we expect the balance to be 70 that looks all good 
And finally, we'll do a balance query of B, and it's the expected 130. So that all looks good. So you've already got a fully implemented JavaScript-based chain code, and uh, you can go ahead and deploy it to your uh, to your network. Um, if you want a more sophisticated uh, sample, you can go to the um, documentation and find the tutorial for writing your first application. This has been updated uh, to include instructions for using Node.js chain code. And finally, you can go to um, uh, fabricshim.github.com io to read more about the documentation we have for all the uh, shim apis you can use in your, in your chain code thanks for watching